Hello, my dear friends. This is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you to share again with you a message from what I've entitled Bible Reflections. And they're short messages from the Word of God. I'm speaking on faith. I want to show you how faith is important in praising God. And I want, I want you to know that, that it's important to, for us to learn to praise God. To praise God. Uh, we, we need to do this because it's good for us to go into the things of God. And so today I share this message with you. It's a message that God has given. And it's a message I share with you found in the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. And, uh, and uh, we've been reading about that chapter in Romans, how we need to praise God. And in verse 20 of that, uh, of that uh, chapter, it says that, that uh, 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 Abraham staggered not at the promise of, uh, of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. It's important to praise God. I want you to learn to praise God. I'm speaking to Christians because it's not, it's not possible for people that are not Christians to really praise God from the heart because they don't believe in Him. You've got to believe in Him and you know Him and to arrive at the place where you can praise Him and know He hears that praise and is pleased. The Bible says in Psalm 115 uh, 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 words like this, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. O oh, ye servants, any you that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of our God, praise God. Praise the Lord, for He is good, and it is pleasant and right to praise the Lord. Over in Psalms 103, the first five verses, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me is, praise His holy name. Bless the Lord, and forget not all His blessings. He forgives your sins. He heals your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He's crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He's filled your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And so it's important to praise God. When you praise God, you please God. When you praise God, it is doing that which is something we need to do. Praise ye the Lord. Abraham, praise God. He staggered down at the promise of God through unbelief, but gave God the glory. He gave God the glory. Hallelujah. You see, when we do something that is according to the will of God and do it in the way that God has told us, then it, we'll see that faith will bring forth the victory for which we can praise God. Now, Abraham and Sarah were married, and God has said to him, You're going to have a son, and uh, I'm going to give you that son. And he waited until he was way up in his fifties, and Sarah said, uh, I'm barren. I can't have a child. It don't look like God is going to help you have this son, so why don't you go into your midwife and have a son? And he did that with Hagar, and she conceived and bore a son named Ishmael. But Ishmael was not the child that God had promised. And so Abraham asked for mercy and waited until he was a hundred years old before the promise came and God gave him the, the strength and the, and the power and the possibility of making Sarah pregnant and she was ninety and they had a son and his name was Isaac and, God, and, and Abraham gave God the glory. And so see faith does the things that helps us give God the glory. And when they had Ishmael when he was at a relative age that was normal for childbearing, they could have said, look what I did, look what I did, look what we did. But when he had a son at an age of 100 and Sarah was 90, they had to say, look what God did. Look what God did, you see. And so sometimes the Lord helps us to see things and to go through things that we cannot get through on an ordinary basis. Just can't do it until we come to the place where we believe in God and trust God alone to do the impossible. Then when it happens, we can say, not look what I did, but we'll say, look what God did. And so it's important for us to see that and to know that and to trust God to help us in every, every time of need. Every time of need. I want you to notice that it's, that, uh, it's impossible for people to see 
the truths of God until they're born again. You have to be saved in order to really praise God. When I tell you to praise God, it'd be like telling a child to quote uh, Abraham's Lincoln and get a verse address word by word. Uh, you, you can't do something until something happens. And that is, you cannot believe and praise God until you're saved. I want you to know you can be saved. I want you to pray this brief prayer with me. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He came from heaven. I believe He paid for my sins on the cross. I believe He rose again. I'm asking you to come in my heart and help me live for God. Thank you, Lord. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. And that will save your soul forever. Oh, believe, and you shall see. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. There may be someone listening right now, and you're saying, that's a foolish thing. That person's a fool talking like that, talking like things can happen and that the impossible can become possible with him in his life. Let me tell you, dear friends, until you're born again and become out of the natural into the supernatural, out of the world into the kingdom of God, out of the flesh, so to speak, into the spirit, into the Holy Spirit, and into your own spirit, you cannot see the things of God. You cannot see. And you need to recognize the importance that we're looking at when we say that the natural man cannot see. And so it's important to, to glorify God, and to glorify Him at all times, in all situations, in all situations. I like that scripture in Mark 9, 23. Jesus said, if you can believe, <clears throat> all things are possible to him that believes. If you can only believe, dear friend, believe that God said He's going to see you through it. He's going to help you. He's going to make a way for you. He forgive your sins. He gives you peace. Accept it. Receive it. Know it's real. And live for God as best you can. This is the way we're supposed to live. And we live even when things look bad. We believe it's going to be good and we thank God for it. Even in the storm, we praise God for the storm because it's bringing us to the place He wants us to be. I saw the other day in the bookstore a book, I, and I bought it, and it's in my library, and I've got to read it. But the title of the book intrigued me. The title of the book was Praise God Anyway. I like that. Praise God Anyway. And I know what the author is saying. He's saying that in all kinds of situations, praise God. Praise God when the sun's shining. Praise God when it's raining. Praise God in the time of trial and trouble. Praise Him. Praise God anyway. That's important. Philip tells us that he went down to Gaza and he praised God. He had to leave a revival to go out of, have to get one lone Ethiopian to win him to Christ, but he praised God. Praise God anyway. Paul and Silas were down in jail at Philippi, both of them beaten and in stocks, and they were hurting and pain, and at midnight they both began singing praises to God. Praises to God. Praises to God. Praise God anyway. Oh, listen. Paul must have said to Silas, Silas, we're down here, we're beaten, where people look down on us, we're humiliated, we're in stocks and bonds. But listen to me. God sent us down here. So therefore, there's a purpose in it. Let's just praise God. Hallelujah. They begin to praise Him. And when they did, there was an earthquake. And that whole prison shook. And the doors flew open. And the stock and the chains fell off the hands and the legs of Paul and Silas. And a great revival took, took place there for the glory of God. 